Hey guys, I am Brandi Ainge, the self-published author of the Kingdom Come series, and I am excited to announce that I am going to be posting a video series right here on YouTube for any author who is considering self-publishing and wants to figure out whether or not it's a really viable option, or those authors who have already self-published but really feel like they could up their game and do it a little bit better or get more sales. So without further ado, welcome to Self-Publishing Bootcamp, a YouTube series where we take a different look at self-publishing from creating professional books to effectively reaching and building an audience. We'll learn how to juggle the hats we all must wear to become successful authors, tackling the process as a reader, as a writer, as a business. Let's dive in. What is self-publishing? Glad you asked. Not that you actually did. <laughs> uh, but self-publishing is a business. Essentially, when you choose to self-publish, you're choosing to start your own business. You are your brand, your book is your product, and you're starting a business. And so a lot of authors think, hey, this is really cool, this is really fun, I wanna keep creative control. There are so many different reasons to choose to self-publish, but you have to realize that when you do, you have to be the creative author and the business person. And that does not mean that you stop being creative. That is a huge misconception, business is not boring. Business is super, super fun, and those who are most successful at it are super creative in their business strategies. So what are we gonna be going over in this series? I am so excited about this series, I can't even tell you. So this video series is gonna be four episodes long. So over the course of four weeks, we are gonna be doing this series. And the first video that we're gonna be talking about is um, just kind of getting started. So we're gonna be talking about how when you self-publish, you have to juggle a lot of hats. And to help me explain, I have here a lot of hats. <laughs> so our first video in this series is going to be talking about preparing your book to self-publish. So that's not just writing a good story because we've got to break that stigma, right? That self-published books are only self-published because they weren't good enough to get traditional publishing deals. We have to break that stigma. And the way to do that is by self-publishing really high quality books, okay? Like we've we've got to get together on this and, and make this happen, okay? So we've got to put together a good product. Um, so while you're writing your book, Put on our writer's hat. I chose this one because it looked the most like brooding. I sit alone in a room and write books all day because that's a stereotype, but it also in my case happens to be kind of true. Um, but yeah, so this is our writer's hat. So we sit down and we're writing our book and it's all about us. It's all about our creativity. It's all about what we want to happen in the book. What we say goes, period. Right, And so a lot of us choose to self-publish because we like that. We like being in control. We like having creative control. We like what we say goes and stuff like that. But with self-publishing and the business side especially, there's a lot of things that what we say doesn't go or at least it shouldn't. And so we have to take off the writer's hat and we have to put on our business hat. I probably have really bad hat hair right now, but that's cool. All right putting on our business hat. I chose this one because it's bright, it's fun, which business is, and I want you to forget business being boring because it's not true. Business is super fun. This is one of my most favorite parts of self-publishing is the business side of things. Um, it's also bright and it's branded. Look at me, look at me, because you gotta get people's attention, right? So that is business. So that's why I chose this hat for business. Um, so, we're gonna be talking about packaging up your book for sale, for publication, for printing. And all that is the ISBN numbers, barcodes, copywriting, all of that kinds of stuff. But it's also the cover design, the interior design of your book, what it looks like. And we think, oh yeah, you know, like self-publishing, I get to decide those things. You do get to decide those things, but it's not about you. It's not about what you like and it's not about your personal preference. 
It's about what your reader wants to see, what they expect to see. So when we talk about those things, we're going to be putting on our business hats. Um, so we're going to be talking about industry standards. We're going to be talking about expectations, genre, um, you know, all of those things that readers, readers when they're shopping are looking for to see in your book. Um, because I'm also really sick of seeing self-published books with god awful covers, like hideous covers. Like someone, the goal is someone walking through a bookstore, just glancing at your book next to all of the other books on the shelves shouldn't cringe and say, oh, that one's self-published. It should blend right in with the traditionally published books. And we're going to talk about how to make that happen. Okay. So that's going to be episode one is preparing your book for self-publishing with the goal of not looking self-published. That's video one. Video two, I am super excited. We're gonna leave on our business hat here, is preparing your book for launch. So before release day, before release day, because if you start promoting, you start marketing your book on release day, you've already, you've already lost brownie points. I'm not gonna say you've already failed. You haven't failed better late than never, but you would be late. <laughs> um, you start promoting your book while you're still writing your book. You start talking it up, you share with everyone you know, all of your friends, all of your family, all over social media, you're posting about the writing process, you're posting about how excited you are, maybe even little sneak peeks, snippets and quotes. You want to have a reader base ready, waiting and eager to buy your book on release day. You also want to get some beta readers or a street team put together. We're going to talk about all of that in this video so that when your book launches and on release date, you already have reviews set up on Amazon and Goodreads so that people can look and see like, oh, this book is legit. So many people have already read it. It's got five stars. I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a try and buy your book. So you need street cred. And for that, you need a street team. So we're going to talk about all of that that goes into promoting your book for book launch in that video, but we're going to take off our business hats and we're going to talk about as a reader, <laughs> this is my reader hat because I feel like I'm ready to go to the beach and just, you know, read a book. So this is the reader hat. <laughs> this might be ridiculous. You can make fun of me in the comments for it. I don't care. That's fine. Um, but so brainstorm and be original. Don't just look at social media, at what other authors are doing. Don't even look and see like, well, everyone's doing this because just because everyone is doing it doesn't necessarily mean that it's working. And just because everyone else is doing it and it's working doesn't mean it's gonna keep working because as we know, social media gets so saturated and it's like trend after trend after trend. It's like as soon as one takes off, another one's right behind it to take its place, right? So we don't want to get stuck in that cycle of just catching on to a trend just too late to where it's no longer working and we're putting all of our eggs in one basket and we're trying this thing. So we want to get creative. So this is why we put on our reader hat and we think as readers, as book consumers, think about your favorite author, your favorite book series. If there was something that they would offer that you would be super, super stoked about, you know? And I don't, I live on an island. Do people outside of this little space stay stoked? I don't know. Um, I do, I say it all the time. Um, but yeah, so think about like, I'm a huge Tolkien fan, okay? Like if he were still alive and he was gonna offer like some kind of like bonus features content email or you know, something like as a reader, what would you get excited to sign on for? What would you subscribe to? What would you, like most want to see deleted scenes, bonus features, uh, short stories, additional content, you know, like, what is it? Like, I'm a ravenous reader when it comes to Tolkien. Everything that Christopher Tolkien has published since his dad's death, I like eat it up. Like, I want more. And so I'm, I'm reading The Fall of Gondolin. I'm reading these bonus short story type things like Baron and Luthien, The Children of Huron. I love Tolkien. So I want all these extra things, like anything Tolkien I can get my hands on, I'm going to read it. And so think about what you're, what you would like as a reader. And chances are your readers would find that pretty cool too. So think outside the box. Don't just follow what other authors are doing, but do what you as a reader wish your favorite author would do. 
Does that make sense? We're gonna get more into it in that, uh, in that second video. So going on into video number three of the series, we are gonna be talking about more business. Um, we are gonna be talking about, okay, so release day comes, your book is out. Now what? What do you do now? Your book is out, it's gonna be like another year or maybe even more for some people, maybe not for others. It depends on if you work 11 million jobs and write on the side, or if this is your full-time gig. Um, what do you do to keep your readers engaged? Okay, so they got super into your promo. They were waiting and eager and your book came out, they bought it, they read it in like 24 hours. They stayed up all night reading it. Now it's gonna be like another year before your second book comes out. How do you keep them engaged in that year? How do you keep them from forgetting about you and you know, keep them waiting and like eager for your next book to come out? You know, you wanna keep that momentum going, right? But you also, you have, to, you have to write your next book. So it's like, how do you juggle the marketing game with the working on my next book game? Because there's no point in readers staying engaged if I'm not gonna write any more books, but in order to write more books, like I've, I've gotta not be marketing 24 seven. So how do you juggle those? So we're gonna talk about that in that video. After book launch, then what? And then in our fourth video of the series, we're gonna talk about how to make it sustainable. How do you make it to where you can become a full-time author? You can publish series after series after series if you want, or book after book after book. You can build a real solid readership. You can have a platform. You can start doing speaking engagements and you know, just have this be your full-time job and live your dream. You know, if you if your dream is to be a full time author, how can you make that happen? And we're going to be talking about how to make it sustainable and how to do it full time and how to keep that growth steady. Um, so that's going to be our fourth, fourth, fourth video. <laughs> that's going to be our fourth video in this series. Oh, my gosh, I am tripping over my tongue. I'm just that excited. Like I am stoked again, that word. Um, but yeah, so I hope that you guys will join me. Um, if you are thinking about self-publishing, if this series sounds intriguing to you, or you're just really looking for information, I am going to have a ton of resources for you guys. Everything that I use, I'm going to be creating PDFs for you guys for checklists and just, yeah, there's going to be a ton of information to help you out, um, to keep you from having to come up with what I had to come up with and to keep you from making the same mistakes that I did, but also to learn what's worked really well for me. Um, and we can just brainstorm some ideas together. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So if you're considering self-publishing, you really do not wanna miss this series. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Comment down below and let me know which episode you're most intrigued to see and what you're kind of hoping might be in those videos. And if you are excited for this series, go ahead and hit that like button. I hope to see you guys there. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and you hit that little bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. See you guys next Tuesday.